Dams have long been a feature of the world's waterways. The oldest known dam is courtesy of the ancient Mesopotamians in the 4th century BC. It was located in present-day Jordan and provided farmers with water for their crops. Fast forward to today and dams can be used for a variety of reasons. We can use them to store water, control flooding, and generate electricity. The size at which modern dams stand is now staggering and have come a long way from the Mesopotamians. The primary use of dams has also changed as climate change has forced us to favor alternative power sources. Hydroelectric dams is the main reason why we choose to block off such large bodies of water. In this video, we're going to look at how these modern dams work. Before we get started, if you do enjoy this video and would like to see more just like it, remember to give us a like and subscribe to our channel to get more sent straight to your notifications. So what is a dam? It's a retaining structure built to create large standing bodies of water known as reservoirs. Simply put, it's a big wall built in the middle of a river to manipulate the flow of that river. Just like a beaver builds primitive dams out of logs to deepen rivers and to protect from predators, we build dams from stone to be able to exploit the power of reservoirs. Once the reservoir is there, we can take the water from it for drinking, watering plants, or most likely for large dams, use a concentrated water flow to turn a turbine and generate electricity. Dams can vary massively in size, so not all are large. However, out of the large dams on Earth today, the highest dam in the US is found near Oroville, California and is 230 meters tall. The tallest dam in the world is the Jinping Dam, which uses the Yalong River in China. It stands at a huge 305 meters tall. In terms of output, the Three Gorges Dam, also in China, comes out on top. It's been the world's largest power station in terms of installed capacity since 2012 at 22,500 megawatts. That's enough electricity to power over 18 million homes based on average consumption rates in the US. Across the planet, hydroelectric power plants generate nearly 6.7% of the world's electricity. As well as delivering hydroelectric power, the Three Gorges Dam intended to increase the Yangtze River's shipping capacity. Also, by providing flood storage space, the dam reduces the potential for floods downstream, which has the potential to impact millions of people. But it's not easy building these super dams, which starts to answer the question as to why there aren't more of them around combating fossil fuels. Before construction begins, water is diverted away from the construction site. Streams and rivers have to be diverted to create a dry area to construct the dam. A tunnel is used to divert water away, or instead, a channel that is constructed around the side of the dam. Soft soils and rocks are excavated to form the root, while harder rocks have to be blasted with explosives. After this process, the foundations are cleaned, excavated, and repaired to the state where they are now solid enough for the dam. Failure to do this may lead to failure of the extra load that the load or reservoir is going to put on these foundations. Supports known as rock bolts might also be used to help with this process. These rock bolts, with netting above the dam, can also stop rocks from falling on it. Forms are then built along the edges of the dam. Rebar is inserted inside to reinforce the structure for concrete pouring. And then when ready, concrete is poured. This must be completed in sections to avoid any collapse in a block formation, just like building a normal wall. The reservoir can start to be filled once the basic formation of the dam is in place. Other structures that make the dam operational are then added. If the dam is simply for water storage, then it is complete. If it's for a complete hydroelectric facility, then it is just one part of that facility. A very large and important part nonetheless but one that needs equally massive turbines to produce the power needed. A hydroelectric dam's aim is to convert the kinetic energy of water movement into electrical energy by using a turbine and generator, just like other forms of producing electricity. Dams essentially act as a holding pen for all this potential energy being stored for when it's needed. When ready, the water is allowed to flow through the turbine, transferring kinetic energy to electrical energy which is then captured by the plant and ready for distribution. A dam will store water up to a pre-approved height. 
This height and the rate of water flow from the reservoir through the dam's turbines controls the amount of electricity produced. As the height of the dam increases, the potential for electricity increases in turn. At the top of the dam, there's a gate used for holding the water or allowing flow from the reservoir. Electricity requirements will dictate when and how often this gate is opened. There are a series of channels between the top of the dam and the turbines. These are known as penstocks and increase the efficiency of the dam by guiding the water down and controlling its slope. This is when the water passes through the turbines that are contained within the dam for energy conversion to take place. After this process, the water is released in a tail race at the bottom of the dam back into the river to continue flowing. Large turbines are often used with large dams. One of these is the Francis turbine that is present in the Three Gorges, amongst others. These turbines need more energy to accelerate their movement. The Francis turbine relies on a hydraulic head to spin. The pressure created by the dam's potential kinetic energy creates this hydraulic head, and this increases with water flow. As a rule, the taller the dam, the more hydraulic head is produced to turn a bigger turbine. As the turbine spins, the hydraulic head is converted into kinetic energy. This process really started taking off during the Industrial Revolution, and going into the 20th century, dams were seen as an excellent way of harnessing energy. The early part of this century ushered in an era of big dam building in the US as electricity demands rose with consumption. During the Great Depression, President Roosevelt created jobs for Americans by putting them to work on these huge dams. The most iconic and well-known structure of this time was the world-famous Hoover Dam. The Hoover Dam is a great example of all the different uses of a dam at work. It achieved the goal of distributing the Colorado River through the dry southwest landscape. This, in turn, allowed major cities like Los Angeles, Las Vegas, and Phoenix to flourish. The dam is also able to irrigate 2 million acres, and it has 17 turbines that produce enough electricity for over 1 million homes. It's made even more astonishing that it was completed in 1936, during one of the biggest depressions of all time. So this is how giant dams work. It's a simple process that needs a huge amount of engineering to pull off. The construction of the dam involves a significant amount of manipulation of nature, as well as a massive amount of materials and manpower to physically produce the giant structure. Once built, these giant dams produce giant reservoirs that can be used for a variety of reasons. Originally, in ancient times, they were simply for pooling water for drinking, which developed into a source for irrigation. Now, we found ways for harnessing the potential energy of water flow to produce huge amounts of electrical energy to power millions of homes. With climate change a very real threat to civilization, it's expected that dams may well be a prominent feature of our world going into the future. What do you think of giant dams? Do you think they are a good alternative source of energy? Should we build more of them? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to our channel to get the latest videos straight to your inbox. Thanks for watching.